maybe not metaphorically. Consider the scene at Tuscaloosa Regional Airport that began assembling at 8 in the morning on the day of Nick Saban's arrival. A woman led a cheer, or maybe it was a prayer, went like this. Praise the Lord, God is good, we got Saban. <laughs> Nick and his wife Terry are headed back to the college life they so desperately miss, where he will once again attempt to walk on water. Chris Mortensen with part one of the Sunday Conversation. I don't know how else I can say it, guys. I've said it three different occasions. Well, then I guess I have to say it. I'm not going to be the Alabama coach. I think I've said this over and over and over again. Why even answer the question when they were asking it? Because sometimes you get it put in a position when you have a commitment and your loyalty is to your players and your team, and you get to ask questions that you're not totally comfortable in answering. But yet, if you don't answer them, that creates another speculation on the other side, which says he is interested. So now, am I being loyal to my team if I say no comment? Or, well, maybe after the season I'll consider it? Then what happens? And when your agent, Jimmy Sexton, called you to say, Alabama wants to talk to you, what did you tell him on that Monday after the season ended? I said, I don't want to talk to him. So the Jimmy persisted. Said, <laughs> first of all, he said, they want to meet with you. And I said, I don't want to meet with them. I said, I'm not interested in doing that. He said, they want to talk to you. I said, I don't think I really want to talk to them. And he said, you really should do this. These people have waited. You know, they were going to hire somebody either out of a bowl game or a pro coach. They've waited. You're their first choice. You at least ought to talk to them. All right, so I had a phone conversation with them. After that phone conversation, Terry and I discussed some of the things that we've talked about already and decided that maybe we should consider it. And then from a media standpoint, this thing really went crazy. All right, and, and I think that... Um, I regret that. I wish that there was some way or something that I could have done to handle this better professionally. I don't know how to do that all right, with the media all right, so that none of this would have happened. Well, some people would say from a public relations standpoint, a media standpoint, it got messy in the end. The appearance from the outside is that you were being less than truthful. Wh what's the explanation? Well, I wasn't interested in Alabama at the time because I was focused on our season. I was focused on giving our football players the best opportunity to be successful in the game. At the time, uh, what else could I say? Uh, that was what I wanted to do, that was my focus, and that was the truth at that time. You're replacing Mike Shula, son of Don Shula, Dolphins great, Hall of Fame coach, who actually has been one of your critics during this transition. How stinging has that been to you to listen to Don Shula criticize? Well, I have, you know, a tremendous amount of respect for Mike, the job he did here. Uh, and I had nothing to do with what happened to Mike Shula here. Um, and secondly, you know, Don Shula is one of the greatest coaches of all times that I have a tremendous amount of respect for as a person and as a coach. So I understand the personal side of it. Uh, if that happened to my son, I'm not sure I wouldn't react the same way. I have a son, uh, and as a parent sometimes, you know, that's how, you know, we view things, and I'm sure I would view it the same way. I, I have heard... Uh some of your critics say, well, because of this incident, now you're, you're, the colleges recruiting against Alabama are going to use that against you. In other words, how is Nick Saban going to go into the living room uh, of a recruit and, and look his parents and that kid in the eye and say, what I'm telling you is the truth? Well, the, the number one thing for me, Nick Saban, all right, whatever anybody thinks, is to be a good person. Honesty, integrity, loyalty, being fair and honest with people all right, has always been the trademark of what I've done. All right, and I'm going to continue to live that way and try to do what's right. And, you know, that's, that's who Nick Saban is. All right, so regardless of what anybody says, that's who Nick Saban is. During his final meeting with Dolphins owner Wayne Huizenga, Saban told him that he would stay in Miami and honor the final two years of his contract. But at that point, Huizenga gave him his blessing to leave for Alabama. Monday on SportsCenter, part two of Mort's conversation with Nick Saban in an exclusive all-access interview. He talks about Bear Bryant's shadow and leaving a legacy in T-Town. That's Tuscaloosa.